So these are two pot still whiskies from the same distillery, but they're very different. And what are the kind of influencing factors that make, you know, coming out of the same distillery? What, what, what influences the difference, I suppose, between the green spot we've tasted and the John's Lane? Mm. Well, usually two whiskies, if they weren't coming from the same distillery, you'd, you'd look at what water was used. Was it soft water? Was it really hard water? Um, where did they get their barley from? Was it coming from Roscommon or was it coming from France? Right. Um, what oak did they use? So really, for these two whiskies, the only two comparable differences would be how long they've been aged for and what oak that, that they use, which is, which is, I suppose, great to see. It's great to be able to, to see the subtle differences between the a slight change in barrel, the green spot being aged in mm-hmm. bourbon, or also sherry, and the Montalena. So the Montalena will be the only difference between these two whiskies because uh, Powers is aged in bourbon, or also sherry, and Iberian oak, so the port pipes. And then I suppose you can definitely see that the Powers John's Lane is that bit smoother just for those extra couple of years that um, they've been aged. It's allowed to soften, soften that alcohol and just kind of round it out and essentially make it just that bit more approachable, which you can we definitely saw um, pre-adding the water to the whiskey. Yeah, they're very two very distinctive flavors. The fact that two different names or two different brands come out of the one distillery, I mean, I suppose that's quite interesting. It's kind of a historical factor because of competition rules and stuff that they had to produce once a, a lot of the distilleries had closed down or been forced to close down. So, like, you... you unusual scenario with kind of Irish distillers producing like Tullamore Dew and Powers is their own and the the green spot is Mitchell and Sons but is that now owned by Irish distillers or no they'd be totally separate companies Mitchell's they just have there's quite a uh, there's quite a bit of contract distillation going on I suppose um like Mitchell and Sons would have originally been whiskey bonders so it's essentially it's almost like a reverse of what Middleton are doing for them. Um, they would have bought Spirit off local distilleries and branded it under their own name. That's how Green Spot was originally founded. Um, so it is, it's very interesting to see, I suppose, a modern day, a modern day uh, almost like a, a remake of um, Whiskey Bondies. Oh. Um, and it is happening more and more often uh, all around the country. We have uh, young distilleries, artisan distilleries making really small batches, but... You know, to get to get up on their feet and to get going, sometimes they need to purchase whiskey elsewhere and mm. start to build a brand and build a provenance around that brand mm. um, until it becomes viable for them uh, to produce whiskey. Well, not even to produce it, but for it to have been produced and for it to be aged long enough to bottle. Um, by law, it'll be three years and one day before um, you can actually release that whiskey as Irish whiskey. It has to be aged on the island of Ireland for that length of time in oak um, before it can be bottled and the majority of the companies won't actually do that um, they'll wait a bit longer because as we all know a three old whiskey can be quite harsh and uh, very unapproachable I just think it's really interesting that you've got two different brands with two different pot still whiskies with two different very different flavours and different styles coming out probably produced by the same person using obviously different wood and maybe different uh, mixture to the yeah, action. absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's just going to be the uh, the proportions or the ratios of one malt of barley and malt of barley yeah. being brought together. Uh, There's a big, huge uh, uh, kind of uptake on Irish whiskies worldwide. I mean, I suppose one of the good things for Irish whiskey is that it obviously has to be produced in Ireland, so it can't be taken off-site and mass-produced anywhere else. And the rules are pretty strict, um, as you say, three years in one day, and you know certain barrels they have to be aged in, and uh, you know, like not all of the whiskies now are being aged in sherry barrels. I know there's a shortage in sherry casks, so I mean some of the some of the brands are the have been kind of uh, inventive in what they're aging bar- aging in now. But the pot stills were still in the American oak and sherry casks and then obviously there was an influence of, of the port and the Zinfandel American wine barrels Yeah with this with this massive resurgence of interest I suppose in Irish whiskey and uh, the old time tradition of 
it being produced in copper pot stills, in the single pot still or the pure pot still style. Um, we're seeing a lot more of the newer producers. Um, they're under real pressure, I suppose, to, to start reproducing it and to, I suppose, go back to their roots, um, which is, is, is great to see because it's what really sets us aside from other whiskies. You, you don't see pot still whiskies coming out of any other country. I'd say the, the Japanese, they're making phenomenal whiskies, but traditionally they're very good at seeing what other countries do, replicating it and doing it to an even higher level, but we still haven't seen a, a, a pot still whiskey coming from them. Um, the Scotch, uh, the Scotch whiskey is renowned for their peated single malts, and now there is a bit of uh, an interest happening with distilleries around Ireland, where we would have traditionally probably we traditionally we would have peated our putchings. We would have mm-hmm. used uh, uh, peated malted barley, or uh, sorry, uh, peated um, grain to to make putching, and we're seeing a bit of a resurgence with that as well. Um, so it's great to see that. Possible whiskies are coming to a forefront again, which is something that's so typically Irish, mm. and no one's touching us. So it's part of our heritage. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> it's, it's part of our provenance. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, onwards and upwards for pot-stilled whiskies. One hundred percent. Long may it last. <laughs>